Welcome to AP Calculus BC video for skill number 224. I can apply the chain rule to differentiate composite functions. All right, for this skill, I'm relying on your prerequisite derivative knowledge. So there's several types of derivatives that we've learned about in Calculus AB, and I'm just giving you a quick snapshot of things that we should be able to remember in order to do the chain rule. We should remember that the derivative of a constant is zero. And we should remember the power rule. For example, if I had 3x to the seventh, that becomes 21x to the sixth. Because remember, we bring the 7 down in front. 7 times 3 is 21, and then the 7 loses a value to 6. And we should be able to use that power rule to fractional exponents as well. For example, 3x to the 1 half. The half comes down in front, and we get 3 halves x to the negative 1 half. We should also know that the, the sum rule, sum or difference rule, so if we have two functions being added or subtracted, we can take the derivative of each independently. We should know the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, making it very special. Our product rule, I find is easier to remember in prime notation. So if you have a function times a function, the derivative of that is f prime g plus g prime f. This is the long notation for it, and this is the prime notation. So I tend to lean towards writing in prime notation. We should also know the quotient rule. So if we have a function divided by a function, the derivative of that is, in prime notation, f prime g minus g prime f all over g squared. So if we had 3x over e to the x, and we wanted to find the derivative of that, we have f prime times g minus g prime times f all over g squared. We should also know derivatives of our six trig functions. The derivative of sine is cosine, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, and the derivative of tan is secant squared. Cosecant, secant, and cotangent are a little bit harder to remember, but we're expected to have them memorized cold, so I've written them down for you to refresh your brain on the six trig functions. And for this skill, we're actually focusing on the chain rule. So we're going to pull all of our rules together and do what's called a chain rule. And what that is is if you're taking, if you have some function that's defined as f of g of x, so we might see it f of g of x, written like that then the derivative of that function, so the derivative of big F, i.e. F prime, big F prime, is the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. So if I had the equation sine of 2x, the outside is the sine function and the inside is the 2x. So the derivative of the outside would be sine, sorry, the derivative of the outside would be cosine 2x, and then we multiply that by the derivative of the inside, which is just 2. So our final derivative is 2 cosine 2x. And I've got some more examples on the next page. Find the derivative of sine of 5x squared. So our outside function is sine. So we're going to take the derivative of the outside, and we get cosine. And then we take multiply that by our, the derivative of the inside function, which is our g of x. So g prime is we use the prop power rule, and we get 10x. So these two multiplied together give us a derivative of 10x cosine of 5x squared. 
using another trig function. A little bit harder because this time it's a secant function. The outside is our secant. And if you remember, the derivative of secant is secant x tangent x. So what we do is secant of the inside tangent of the inside. And then we multiply that whole thing by the derivative of our inside function, which is 50x minus 4. And if we write that out, again, we can have our total expression kind of collapsed as the product of three terms. We can use the tangent or the chain rule to evaluate other types of functions other than just trig. So in example three, we're looking at an eighth, another composite function where we have e to the u, where our u is our inside function of x ln of five. So the derivative of the outside would be the derivative of e to the u, which is just e to the x ln of 5. And the derivative of the inside, our inside function, we just have x times a constant. So the derivative of x times a constant is just the constant value. So we get the constant there. And we can rewrite this whole expression. We notice that the ln and e cancel and bring the 5 down, and we get 5 to the x times ln of 5. What this does is it sets us up for a often forgotten differential rule or differentiation rule, which is shown on the next page. Take a closer look at that snout. The derivative of a number raised to an exponent is the number raised to the exponent times the natural log of the base. And that was derived from the last example. If you want to see it in greater detail, check out the textbook. It works through and explains how those two relate. But if I wanted to find the derivative of 2 to the x, the derivative of that is 2 to the x times ln of 2. Or 5 to the x would be 5 to the x times ln of 5. In example 4, what I've got is a chain rule within a chain rule. So our outer function is cosine. Our inner function is 3 raised to this power. And our inner inner function is 5x squared. So what we can do is we can take the derivative of the outer which would be negative sine, times the derivative of the inner. So if we want to take the derivative of the inner, we're going to have to apply the chain rule again. So we start by taking the derivative of the outer, which we use the rule we just learned, a to the x times ln of a, and then we multiply it by the derivative of the inner. So this is a rather complex example. Uh, if you're struggling to see all the pieces to it, don't worry. The uh, exercises that we practice on the worksheet should clear up a lot of the ideas of the chain rule. What you should focus on is that we start at the outside and slowly work our way in, taking the derivatives. Uh, and that is the chain rule. All right, this concludes the video for skill number 224. I know it was quick and dirty, but the chain rule is something that we practiced several times all through calculus AB, and generally we should have a pretty solid concept of it.